Yeah, just make sure it's recording. That's all. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Gary Dean and Woody Dorsey, and this is our market conversation for January 18th, and we have a lot to go over. So without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to Woody Dorsey. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. So I'm going to try to keep this quick, but this is a very powerful uh, market situation. Again, I've been saying for months, let the market go up. Let it go up into this time frame. Okay. And let's talk about where we are and what that means for you as a trader. Um, and w one of the things I'm going to point out is, yeah, you know, I think the market's made a high now. Okay, I can go on record. It was due in this period. We'll look at a couple things, but I see many nuances. I think we we're very close to having confirming making a high in the market. Isn't that great? So what are you going to do? Load up on the short side and make a lot of money? No, probably not really. And also, let me just say, selling tops is always difficult, and particularly since this is clearly a breakout. So you have to be careful here. It would be nice to get further confirmation, and we will. But as I'll get into, the kill zone is not due now. Anyway, so we've been preparing for this. Here we are. I think we have made the high. And now let's look at the uh, intermediate term sentiment. And what I'm showing uh, here is that this, uh, we're seeing sentiment divergence where the sentiment made a high, it started to decline, and the stock market actually went on and made new highs. And this is very similar to what we have seen um, in prior prior market highs, so this is this is classic that alerted us to the fact that um, okay. So I mentioned the timing. We've been looking forward to this timing for a high, and what we do, of course, at sentiment timing is timing and sentiment. And I'm showing you here the uh, sentiment. Uh, longer, a little bit longer term sentiment and showing you this divergence pattern and we've seen this occur four or five times and it's very typical. So the sentiment is fitting in with the timing for what we were looking for. Now let's look at the uh, at the uh, at the S&P daily here and this is pure price and I had talked about this um, this Brexit uh, fractal that we had the rally up from the Brexit low and we've had a similar kind of move here again on similar unexpected uh, political developments but the thing I want to point out here is you see these these circular lozenges here these ovals look at the topping process that occurred and we're doing something very similar here so this is typical. Now the other point, and we're going to get to this in a minute, is notice that even after this top, if you'd sold this top right here, you were pretty frustrated. The actual top tick, you were kind of frustrated for a while. The market then broke down, but it came up pretty sharply and hung around. And these tops can be very, very frustrating, even though an absolute high is in place. And then finally, towards the middle to the end of the move, you get more satisfaction. So that is, the, that is what to be looking for in the current market situation. So the uh, S&P weekly I'm showing here, it sure looks like it should go higher. Everyone thinks it's going to go higher. But again, it is running out of time. And I'm going to talk now about the kill zone ratios. Now, the kill zone, there's always a kill zone in a market. This is, this is probably a micro one or a minor one, but there's always a point in time in a market trend. It could be on the upside, but in this case, a kill zone is typically on the downside where the market really gives it up and lets go. And that is when you make the most money on the short side. And again, typically it occurs well after the high print and usually even before the bottom. So I'm going to discuss this here, uh, the ratio of the trend when a kill zone occurs. 
and if we look at the S&P uh, 500 here weekly, what I'm showing you is that these declines, like this decline right here, this decline right here, this decline right here into the, the Trump low. Notice that that's where you made your money, in that portion of the decline. Notice that it occurs well after the high. In this case, well after the high, in this case, weeks, many weeks. And it comes down, when it comes down right here, it's big to the downside, it's quick, it's down and dirty. That's the kill zone, that's when you make money on the short side. Now, one of the things to notice, I have these two square boxes here, is that these lows were both double, double, double bottoms. And you can see that those took, you know, like five, five weeks or so to unfold. So in reality, during this double bottoming process, it was actually really hard to make money on the short side because the market hit a low, came up hard, no one knew was it bottomed or not, or, and then it comes down again, retest the low and goes on. So often the market, the best time to be short the market is not at the low and it's not at the high. It's in these kill zones. And the ratio of these kill zones is typically what I'm calling about 60% to 90% of trend. Now, because I am able from my trend duration analysis and the timing work to estimate, just as I did when this market might be making a high, when the kill zone will occur, because it will occur before the next low. And what I'm saying to you is that there is time for this kill zone uh, to unfold. And I'm going to be stalking this kill zone in the upcoming written reports. The kill zone is likely weeks away. However, what does this mean? I'm telling you I think the market has made its high. When I see it today, I see things that are happening with the financials and many other things I look at. Uh, I think we've begun to, to break down. But again, the kill zone isn't here, so you're not going to make a ton of money being short. You don't sell the high with both hands. What you do is, first of all, you tighten your stops on the long side, you get out of any longs, and you carefully and slowly build some kind of a position, maybe using option spreads, without an expectation you're going to make a lot of money right away. You could. Okay, but that's not the expectation to have, and I would begin that process now. And we'll be talking about the kill zone in the upcoming, upcoming written reports. So one can go ahead and begin to initiate a process of being on the right side of the market, which is no longer the long side. Now, I could be wrong. There's still a little time here, but again, we want to look ahead. We want to forecast ahead so you're prepared about what to do. And you can make uh, small moves towards being on the short side. I mean, today I, for instance, uh, bought S&P, SPY put spreads. Small, but it, it's something to be involved with and you have time on your side because you're using put spreads. So that's all for now. The top is in place. Kill zone is coming, but it's not here yet. Well, the one thing I'd Thank like to add on this, what do you said? Sure, uh, go ahead. The, yeah. the kill zone part, it's, you know, the, these... Uh, particular patterns that Woody's talking about right now, they, they, they don't come ar around often. Uh, you have, he has a black hole, he's got the kill zone, and, and they're not, these aren't things that, that happen a lot per year. If you get one or two, it's a lot. So, it, and the good part about them is that it's a, you know, anticipation of a sharp move to the downside followed by a sharp move to the upside. And, and that's where, if you know, you know what to expect ahead of these, uh, you know these turns, you're you're able to uh, position your portfolio correctly and you control your emotions, and and that's one of the biggest things that traders and even professionals uh, where they run into trouble is when they're caught unexpected and you get a sharp move in the wrong direction that they're expecting, and and even professionals make you know drastic mistakes when. Uh, when their emotions are are taking control of these trades, so it's important to know, uh, you know, when when these zones are coming, and that's what we're going to be going over in our upcoming reports. Okay, very good. Now, Gary, are you twisting my arm right now? 
Am I? Am I what? Yeah, yeah, you're twisting my arm. Okay, <laughs> bonus time. Bonus time. All righty. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. You have the, uh, your is memory is low. Volatility. I see that. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah, it's the volatility. Volatility index, very important. Again, there are many things that I follow, uh, and I've been doing it for 40 years. In the sentiment timing report, we're specifically doing the S&P 500. But there are other things I look at to inform that view, and obviously volatility is very important. This is showing you the volatility, and again, what's happened, you can see my cursor here, you see that? The volatility is bottomed. It's bottomed. Almost looks like what a triple bottom. <laughs> what does it mean? It go, even goes back to those levels back there. It means if volatility is going to be coming on, that probably the stock market is going to begin to correct. So this fits in with that, and I can tell you uh, that the structural timing pattern is such that the next time I want to sell volatility, probably May, probably May to sell volatility. So that one, tells you one a lot. One thing that I, I'm just looking at your, your VIX chart here, and it, you, you were uh, talking about Brexit and uh, when, when Trump won the elections. And if you look, these are actually the same types of patterns that the uh, uh, S&P was making, except it's reversed. Yeah, so that's – now, are you still – you're still just my arm, so I'm going to give you one other quick <laughs> thing, and then I'm going to sign off. All right. Have you ever heard of – there's a sector in the stock market a lot of people have never heard of. Gary, have you heard of the financials? Yes. Oh, okay. All right, so you're <laughs> you're pretty sharp. Okay. Hear anybody talking about the financials? Is everybody long the financials? Most people well, that I'm, I'm listening to are. Well, so I'm – Look at look at the move up that it's had, and um, it's actually um, this is another pattern that I'm looking at. Uh, let me just go to the weeklies here. Is it's um, look? It's actually put in a double top and it's starting to reverse just on the day when the great glorious golden Goldman Sachs has said that everything is so great. The XLF pattern is also structurally negative. So you start to build all these things together with the volatility, the preferred S&P timing, other esoteric things I look at. That's why, you know, I'm saying is that I think that we have actually put in a high. Again, you don't usually make a lot of money selling the highs. You'd think that you would, but you don't. You make the most money during a three of three from Elliott Wave point of view, or a kill zone, and that happens between 60 and 90 percent of trend duration. Right. So anyway, let's see what happens here. We've waited for this. We've been talking about this for a couple months. Here we are in, into the inauguration. Again, markets, tops are hard to call, breakouts are hard to reverse. But it is a process. It's be an exciting time. That's that's uh. That, yeah, I, I know I'm, I know I'm excited for uh, this uh, yeah. increased volatility to pick up. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Okay, that's it for today. We'll, Thanks everybody. We have a regular report tomorrow. Okay, cheers. Take care.